Hey class, um, I thought I would share a little demo um, about painting onto your abstract still life if you choose to use paints. Um, again, you can stay with the drawing and make it just lots of drawing, rich layer, uh, shades of very dark to all the way to light, keep adding shapes, etc. But if you choose to paint, um, I'm gonna just show you a few strategies. What I'm doing here is um, selecting a palette, a, at least a, with a few guidelines. So I am basically gonna do a set of complements, blue and orange. So just even before painting, I've got my, I've got some extra colors mixed. I've got a bunch of blue, bunch of orange ready to go but I always have my secondaries. I always have a green, a purple also available, and um, you know, have your primaries, red, yellow, blue. I've mixed a little extra, I've mixed a pale blue with white in it. I've mixed a greenish blue and a purplish blue. So I have shades of blue, and I'm mixing some shades of orange. So a pale orange, a yellowish orange, and here a brown made from blue and orange put together, and a grayish with the, some white added to that brown. So that's just so I don't have to remix constantly, um, but I'm sure I'll make add lots of other colors to this, but it's a good starting point. Um, and I've got a bunch of white. I like to have two piles of white because they get muddy quickly. Um, so also I would suggest I've already filled this palette so I would have a, get an extra sheet of palette paper or tin foil or wax paper just so you can keep mixing freely I also have some water ready to go and I have two brushes so I have my wide flat brush and I have a smaller pointy brush um, honestly be creative you can use q-tips to paint you can use the back of the brush you can use your fingers. Um, brush stroke is an adventure. So I've already started here. I'm setting up a really strong relationship right away from orange to blue. Um, I am starting, so just because you're in orange and blue doesn't mean you can't have some red. So I'm pushing my orange all the way to red here. Ombre or gradation all the way to yellow here kind of separating brush strokes and then not leaving any white gaps but really right away pushing a deep blue in the negative space to get a reaction going and I'm just going to improvise from here so I'll, I'll show you progress in a moment okay so a few things I'm doing just in this section is I have faded from my deep red through orange to yellow with these separate strokes flowing along this curve. And here, as I got into the empty page, I'm using white strokes. So white, you should think of white as a paint, as a color, um, and not rely on the empty canvas or empty page. You can leave some canvas, but you shouldn't leave too much. Um, in fact, right now I'll show you, uh, clean my brush. White really, as a paint, as a color, really functions differently than the page. So say I'm going to turn my brush on its side here and go along this plane at the edge of the brush and see how different that feels and looks than just the empty white page. Now I'll take my strokes horizontal. Okay, so see how totally different that looks. Um, so now, as I get over here, maybe I'll take, um, maybe I'll leave that pencil line and use some of my neutral brownish color to come right up to that edge. And then I'll follow, I'm gonna like, use some of the white that's left in my brush. I'm gonna follow along that diagonal. So every time you come to a new shape or a curve or a, a line that you have, 
think of what you can do. There's infinite variety. So here I'm going to turn my brush and kind of follow that curve, hug that curve, blend it in, and then I'll transition this back into that diagonal stroke. Okay, over here, where I had that deep purpley blue starting pressing right up against that orange, I'm now fading into a pale blue. So while you have to think about working wet into wet paint, or the difference when it's dry. So now I've, I'm fading into, into this white, but I'm bringing some of my wet blue out into the white, and by reverse, some of my white into the blue, so I can try and get a kind of transition. I, here's where your finger can even be useful. Look at that. So, no rules. Um, okay. Maybe you can also control the level of water you use. So here I'll add a little water. And maybe as I come up to the edge of the paper, I'm just going to turn that into a little more of a wash. Maybe I'll even take it into this salt shaker. So I just took it into the salt shaker with a wash. And by ending there, I'm adding a new plane onto that salt shaker. Okay, now I'll just fade over here. Okay, while we're on that subject, I'm going to grab a, a reddish orange, because I'm always thinking my, my, uh, of going to those set primaries that I have. So, reddish orange. And I'm going to do something here. I'm going to use paint as line. So I'm going to kind of redraw this salt shaker with an orange line. Maybe I'll make it a little more, even more red, and I'll use that there. Okay, actually, this maybe I'll switch to my other brush. And now, just for variety, because again, there's no right answer here. There's no right or wrong answer. I'm gonna do the other line of this salt shaker in blue. Okay, and then, so here, two things meet. Maybe here, I'm gonna turn this into blue. So it's interesting what happens, and you can always change things layer. But now this squash shape is going from orange into yellow into white, and then continuing in blue. Now maybe I'll turn this into a thick line. Maybe, remember our, um, maybe I'll get a purpley blue. Remember we have cross contour, so maybe you've done some of that in your drawing. So you can use paint as line too. So now I've got bluish purple lines there and then I'll think, always think, I'm inside a form, now I'm going to jump outside the form. So I'm going to paint some of that similar color outside the form. And maybe I'll even leave that as white. And you can change shapes as you go. So maybe I'll get rid of that line I had here. Just carry that out to the edge, fade it, fade it into purple. Always think what you're going to do at the edge of the paper. Okay, I don't want to lose this negative shape. I like that negative shape. So, see that makes a clear, pointy, interesting shape. Now I'm going to switch back my brushes because I don't want to leave too much um, empty page. So I'm going to get one big stroke of white and nice thick stroke. Maybe I'll bring it in that way, curving those lines along with that cross contour. And then maybe I will bring that up here. And while it's still wet, I'll grab some of my pale orange and just blend it in. So this is really just all improv. Um, and, I, and it may not work, 
where it might look really cool. So I'm gonna blend that way. Okay, so see now we got all this fun stuff going on. The sweep and twist like a vortex here. This geometric thing breaking that. Maybe I will. So you can always step outside of your palette when you want an accent. So I'm gonna go for a deep reddish purple here. And maybe I'll just turn this whole tiger guy into a silhouette. I'm working super fast here. But, um, let's see. And if I make, make a mess here, I jump out of the lines, that's okay. I can always come back in just a few minutes with white. So, yeah, I'll give him another ear. So now there's this kind of interesting shape. I don't like that at all. See, I just ruined it. I think I totally ruined it. <laughs> but this is the fun part. I could wait a few minutes or I can fix this right away. I didn't like how he didn't have a clear shape. So you know what? Maybe he's not going to be a tiger at all anymore. Now I'm pressing in here, so this negative shape that was in the curve of the squash kind of becomes more of a positive shape. Bring back that corner line again. Sorry, this is so wobbly. Um, Alright, maybe now figure out this tiger. Alright, it's too wet, so I'm learning. Learning by doing. Um, I need to let this dry before I re-examine what I'm going to do here with this tiger. Okay, I'll do some more, check back in. Okay, so a little more progress here. Um, you'll notice this tiger, I fixed him a little, I decided to pull his legs up across onto that blue part of that circular squash shape. Um, I have moved into a kind of blue-green here, so complements, pushing red and green, went diagonal strokes here to contrast with the curve, and then carried that green, then decided to bring some pale blue across. Here, decided to fade that into pale blue, have this corner be orange, and then I've put some of the orange strokes on top of the blue. So that's another technique, just layering strokes so you can see both. With this tiger dude, I quickly tried to paint him with light and shadow. So some places you'll use color like flat shapes. Sometimes you can use illusion like light and shadow. So just exaggerating the lights coming from here and the shadows on that side. I could refer back to my photo for that. And I painted this squash having, you know, thinking about continuity of form. So that blue is carrying through to the stem of the squash there. So that kind of unites that form. Um, and this tiger, so this is important. I got this outline, decided to just do him an outline. And really important is that I had to add water, quite a bit of water to my orange paint with a thin brush. Okay, make it really quite liquidy in order to be able to paint a line. Okay, you need to sometimes add water to get the viscosity right to be able to paint line. So there, there's that. Now I'm thinking, okay, so here my blue crosses into the salt shaker. What could happen? Anything could happen. It could become opposite color, it could become orange. Maybe I'll treat this as, oops, as kind of a softening. So when it crosses behind that glass, it's just gonna go pale. And maybe while I'm at that, I will just go gray blue, adding water over here. I'll just go gray blue with this whole plane. So now I'm turning this brush so I get a kind of side stroke. 
can if you lose a form that's okay you can always come back so interesting now this these colors are very similar I kind of like how subtle that is but maybe I'll enhance let's get some of my dark brown maybe I will go back over this line not rely on my pencil make that a line maybe get some gray blue outline in here and let this transition be very subtle let's see so again it's all improvising um, so what can I do with this section of the salt shaker maybe I'll go just a different kind of soft gray not a lot of contrast you know maybe I'm thinking about how glass just kind of filters light and color okay that seems to kind of work you you may have to like you may have to do lots of things and then decide if it works so now I'm thinking about the rim of that salt shaker so I'm gonna go to my white get it a little liquidy with my pointy brush really have to get it on there really look at that it's on there and then I'm gonna remember how we use those electric erasers I'm gonna kind of enhance that rim and then you know what that gives me ideas glass catches light like that so maybe I'll add a few little light lines maybe even one down here or there probably if I look back at my photo there probably are some light lines like that on glass okay so there's another little layer of you know touching on realism but being abstract okay now always step back look at it so now I'm realizing this is kind of bad I have gotten obsessed with this area and this a part of the painting is not dealt with at all so I'm gonna jump down here to get something going start balancing this okay so I needed to correct that quickly so I really attacked that bottom part of the painting um, by adding water um, a bunch of water to my colors to just get down some color really fast I needed to see something happen before I can you know add and finesse and figure things out so I started with this corner went to a dark dark orangey red um, and kind of gray, uh, gradation into orange um, wanted to accentuate this curve going off the page coming back on haven't dealt with him yet here I thought I'm gonna go really flat thick paint um, to kind of contrast with some of the more brushy things so really thick layer fairly flatly painted not really curving with the squash just very flatly painted and then I thought I'll push towards a yellow yellowy orange down here um, haven't figured out this transition yet here I'm using white again like we did up there so going with white strokes diagonally now a few more things happened um, this tiger I decided to do him in three shades three separate shades a dark orangey red a middle red and a light orange it was I tried a yellow but it didn't work so I painted over it maybe you can see some of that yellow still underneath so sometimes the first try doesn't work so you try a different color now I want you to see this we've got this tiger going off the edge but watch what happens now if I take some of that same color and bring a tail shape back on to the page could have curved in some different directions but now I've got a curve relating to this curve and in fact I will continue the logic of my tiger here and uh, in those three shades I will make this tail have a dark under 
layer, like his belly. So now see the, how that takes us off the page, brings us back on. Here, remember I said the middle was not working for me, so I added a new curve. You know, just borrowing from the squash shapes or from a tiger tail, just to get something going, because I feel like there are this, these nice curves meeting in the middle. I have to figure out how to fade this out now and deal with this. Uh, almost there. Okay, so I kind of resolve that middle by turning that into a spiral that kind of fades into the darkness of the center and did a gradation of kind of darker orange red into lighter. Then something just I couldn't get a transition here so I decided why not I will take a salt shaker and have the front of it turn it on its side um, and then so carry the white into the top of the salt shaker kind of merging those two forms connecting them and then I was like why not just go nuts and add some salt didn't have to be white but why not have some salt pouring out so we get a flow this way and that kind of balances the flow, this white shining flowing that way, white going that way. Um, also little marks, like texture marks. So this is a texture that catches our eye, just like that texture and these and these. So you want to have little marks sometimes, take you from small things, small brush stroke into larger. And let's see what this looks like. fun and with abstract painting you could work on a painting for years or days um, I could keep changing this keep layering things but what I was talking about right from the beginning is having the positive and negative shapes be ambiguous so the sometimes what might seem like background suddenly becomes also a shape um, makes it feel like a thing or what's inside becomes outside um, and as much exciting stuff whether it's black and white or color as much exciting stuff brushstroke happens outside the objects or inside so like here here I got light and dark so it feels almost like shading like a 3d object like the bottom of a squash maybe but really, it's kind of also a negative space between this sweep of the squash. So every, hopefully every shape does more than one thing. And once again, I will just say there's no right or wrong way to do it. You just want to kind of hope to make something happen whenever shapes meet each other or cross over each other. Okay? And... Be willing to keep changing, keep editing, and um, see where it takes you.